Okay, so I think we can start now. Um, thank you everybody for coming to my talk. Um, I'm gonna be talking about a project that I've been working on for uh, about a year now, um, which is the Grease Pencil 3 project. Um, I think we're gonna have some time at the end, so if, if you have some questions uh, that come up throughout the talk, then wait till the end and I can may maybe answer them. Um, all right, so um, going back one year to the Beacon 2022, um, there was a meeting about uh, Grease Pencil and the future of Grease Pencil, um, and we were just uh, like setting up the bi-weekly meetings, which we're still doing today. And this was, I think, sort of for me personally, where the idea that um, I could be working on this like would solidify itself. So this was sort of for me the, the beginning of Grease Pencil 3 um, back then. Of course, I was still working at uh, SPA. Uh, so um, at SPA, we were really trying to, to push things to use Grease Pencil in the pipeline for layout, for storyboarding, uh, and even for animation. Um, and we tried, but we struggled. Uh, <laughs> And, and we had to modify Blender um, to, to actually get something that uh, the animators were satisfied uh, with. Um, and, and we presented that at talk last year <laughs> uh, at the conference with Jan. And uh, yeah, so if, if, you, if you've seen that talk, it was like, you know, we had these slides with like complicated stuff going on and this, and it was basically this, right? It was uh, like uh, <laughs> waving our hands uh, and, and, and you know, talking about the struggles um, of trying to make things work. Um, and so I think this brings me to the, the why. Why would we need a new grease pencil? Um, and it's, it's, it's really about um, some uh, like bigger things, like uh, there, there's some major performance issues when you try to scale things up to a production scale, you, you run into performance issues, uh, memory issues, etc. And so that was the, the first motivator to say, okay, let's, let's start something new. Um, and Grease Pencil sort of lives a bit in its own world inside of Blender. <laughs> uh, it has its own modifier stack, it has its own materials, it has its own render engine. I mean, it's, it's really, in, in many cases, separate from the rest of Blender. So trying to integrate it more as like, you know, uh, into the whole system of, uh, of Blender is another motivator. And then, well, I mean, you know, development for Grease Pencil started like 15 years ago in like 2008. Um, back then, of course, it was still the annotation tool, but um, throughout the years, you know, the, the, we, we sort of accumulated hacks upon hacks. <laughs> And, uh, and so the, the technical depth just kept increasing. So to summarize, we wanted a new foundation for the future of Grease Pencil and to really, yeah, uh, make it production, you know, at, a, at production scale um, usable. Um, at the end of 2022, I came up with a proposal on how to do that. Uh, the, the details don't really matter, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I sort of uh, sketched up something and, and, and proposed some ideas to the developers on how we could do it. Um, and then 2023 started. Um, SPA was sort of a thing of the past then, unfortunately, and we um, began finalizing the, the, the proposal. So then I, I was working for Blender. I, um, I came for one week for a sort of mini workshop and um, we had uh, multiple meetings on, on trying to figure out, okay, what are sort of the limitations that we see with the design and iterating on it and, and solving all the issues um, that we could foresee. And so we came up with a proposal with, with all the admins that everybody was happy with. Um, and that's when the project started. Um, so March 2023, and, and we published a blog post about announcing it that uh, this was going to be something, of course, we... Um, <laughs> yeah. 
it, it wasn't going to come to 4.0. That's uh, well, that, that's how things go. Um, so yeah, let's let's start up, talk about Grease Pencil 3. Um, so uh, this is a technical talk, so I will talk about some technical things, um, starting with with the core data structure and, and how it changed from Grease Pencil 2 to Grease Pencil 3. Um, I want to talk a bit about attributes and implicit sharing. I know that was already a topic in a talk yesterday here, but um, <laughs> I'm going to look at it from sort of the grease pencil side of things. Um, I want to talk about a drawing tool, which I guess is now sort of a tradition since I talked about it already <laughs> in the past uh, talks. Um, and I have, a, I have a short video demo of where we are at today with grease pencil 3. Um, of course, it's far from done, but you're going to see that. All right, so let's get started. Uh, oh, yeah, so this is um, basically how the project is um, being developed. We started with the core data structure that was in March, and then we sort of start building like a high-level API around the data structure so that you could do things like add a layer, right? So this is like for the program, is, uh, you know, give me a new layer or uh, add a keyframe, create an empty drawing, things like that. And then after that, we uh, moved on to higher level stuff. Uh, started to implement the operators, import them, uh, implement tools like the drawing tool, like the eraser. Uh, worked on modifiers. Just a few weeks ago, we added uh, geometry nodes support, which is exciting. Um, and of course, rendering. Right, but let's, let's start talking about the data structure. So, to remind ourselves on how this looked um, in the past, let's start there. Uh, how does it look right now in, in Grease Pencil? And we start with uh, this linked list of layers. So this is your layer stack uh, here. It's going left to right, but really it's going like bottom to top. Um, and then inside of each layer, we have a bit of data, like its name, like its opacity, uh, things like that. And then every layer has this linked list of frames. So a frame is, um, is if you imagine your dope sheet, right, you have your keyframes, and basically every one of those keyframes is a frame. Um, and so yeah, you just imagine them in, in chrono chronological order. And then each frame contains also some data. It knows about its frame number. It knows about its keyframe type, et cetera. Um, and then each frame contains a linked list of all the strokes. So that is your drawing, basically. All of the strokes linked together. Uh, not visually linked together, just in the data structure. Um, and then each stroke oops, contains um, also some data, like it knows about its material, it knows whether or not it's cyclic or not. Um, and it has an array of points. And each point contains a position, a radius, opacity, etc. And those, if you imagine the points uh, laid out in memory, that's similar to also talk we saw earlier, where each struct um, is sort of placed after one another in the in the memory. So you have position radius, etc., and then again position radius, etc., all spread out um, throughout the, the array. So this is it. This is uh, basically what Grease Pencil internally looks like right now. So. Going to Grease Pencil 3. We still have this layer stack um, going again from bottom to top. Uh, I'm simplifying things a little bit here because we also now have groups where you can group layers together, but really they don't change the way the, the layer stack works. They're just like a, a way to organize things uh, in, in the UI essentially. Um, so yeah, we still have that, and now each layer contains again some data like its name, has a selection, etc. But it now has a sort of uh, more specialized data structure to represent the frames, where I'm, I'm representing it here as like a, like a map. So you have your uh, scene frame, and then those uh, scene frames map to um, an index of a drawing. They're not actually containing any drawings. They're just mapping uh, into an array of drawings um, using the index. Um, so this is what this would look like. And the drawing array is at the object data level, so it's at the same level as the layers. Uh, they're not contained within each other. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that this implies um, afterwards. 
But what is a drawing? So <laughs> a drawing now is two spreadsheets and something, an offset array. Um, so every, um, everything data related inside of the drawing is now stored in attributes. Um, and we have this, um, these two, what we call domains, the point domain, the curve domain. And you can imagine a spreadsheet literally for each of them where every row is one of the elements. So every uh, row in the points domain is a point. Um, and every column is one of the attributes. So you have a column for the positions, the radius, etc. cetera. Um, it also now means that we can have custom data on uh, your drawing on the point domain, on the curve domain, etc. cetera. Um, and um, I'm gonna talk about drawings more in the next slide, but we also have a layer domain now, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is interesting. Uh, it means that you can store attributes on layers um, and also custom attributes. Um, yeah, I'm just having an example with the opacity and maybe a tint or, you know, you could imagine plenty of things. Um, but let's talk about drawings a bit more and I, I wanna look at um, sort of the concrete example. In, in the code, the drawing is basically a curves geometry for any developer in the room. Um, so this is the same data structure that's actually used for hair curves now, uh, the, the sort of new uh, data structure to represent curves. So let's look at an exa uh, example. Um, this is a beautiful drawing <laughs> um, with just two strokes uh, and a couple of points. Um, and this is what the actual sort of spreadsheet of that uh, would look like. So we have eight points in total, right, zero to seven, um, with a bunch of positions. I didn't put the positions, but you could imagine there were, you know, positions there. Um, and then the radii. So uh, if you look, we have um, the first point here. I guess the second point uh, is a bit, you know, it's a bit larger. So it has a radius of 1.5. And this one is even bigger. It has a radius of 2.5. Just to illustrate like how these rows and columns correlate to what you see on screen. Um, so these are the points. But what about the curves? So this is all you need to store for the curve. So we have two curves, 0 and 1. One is not cyclic, this one. The other one is, right? The end is connected. And the way we know basically which points correlate to which curves is using this offset array. Um, it's not an attribute because it, had, it has one more element, which is the total number of the points. Um, but to illustrate what this means, so the zero here means that the curve zero starts at point zero, which is here. And curve one starts at point one, F point four, sorry, which is here. And so then, then it goes five, six, seven, and because it's cyclic, it goes back to four, right? Um, now, if we were to change, let's say the offset four to three, then this is the drawing we'll get, right? So now the first curve, second curve starts at three and goes four, five, six, seven, and because it's cyclic, Back to three. Right. Um, so I hope that illustrates well how a drawing is structured. Um, going back to this, so um, one more thing about the, these these mappings. Because we're now mapping uh, using indices, it means that we can do things like this, where suddenly another keyframe later in the timeline maps to the same drawing, right? So you can have sort of linked keyframes where um, you're editing one, but you're changing the other as well, right? So you, you imagine like making a walk cycle and just duplicating the keyframes, but linking them so that you, you don't have to redraw the drawings that you're changing. Um, so that's one of the benefits of using this kind of data structure. Cool. Right. <laughs> so I want to talk a bit about um, these attributes and and Implicit sharing, again, something that we, we talked about uh, yesterday, but um, what is implicit sharing and, and why, why is it so important? Um, basically, um, the thing that Jan and I talked about last year at the conference, this, you know, uh, trying to minimize copies essentially, right, using this update cache thing. This is a similar, um, 
like it, it, it's a different solution to um, the same problem essentially, which is you want to avoid copying data. Um, so if you imagine um, you have original data, so you have an object like a mesh, and uh, we have this great concept in Blender that you can do things procedurally to an object, right? You can modify its data without actually destroying the original one. So you work in a non-destructive way. And we do this by making a copy. So uh, instead of acting on the original data, you do change just the copy of the data so that you don't destroy the original one. You get it. Um, now, if you do this copy, it can be quite expensive, right? If you have billions of polygons uh, or points, then uh, this is going to take a long time. So you want to avoid that as much as you can. Um, and the idea with implicit sharing is that, well, when you make a copy, you don't actually copy the data. You just say, oh, I'm, I'm just sharing the data. I'm just you know, using the same data. Um, and then you might say, well, okay, now, but if I do my modifying on this evaluated object, I'm going to destroy the original object. Um, but the point is that you only do the copy when you actually modify. So the modifier, when it tries to change the positions, for example, it will then do the copy. Um, and it sort of seems like at first we're sort of back to the original play. We, we still made the copy. You know, where's the difference? Um, but for one, if you don't have a modifier, right, then we're here. So you didn't do the actual copy, which is great. You know, you, you, um, you sort of, um, you, you can skip the copying. And the other thing is that we're not actually like, because here I'm, I'm just, you know, I just have this generalized data. But in actual, in actual fact, um, you have these attributes, right? So here you, ha you have a drawing, for example, that you want to evaluate. And let's say you have uh, some, some sort of deform modifier and it, it deforms the positions. Well, with implicit sharing, we actually just need to copy the positions and then deform them in the copy. And we don't actually need to copy any of the other att attributes at all. We can just use the original ones. Um, so it saves a bunch of copying. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically the whole idea. And just to clarify, this applies to the curves geometry, so it applies to Grease Pencil 3 now, which we weren't able to do before with the uh, current Grease Pencil data structure. All right, let's talk about drawing. So, one second. Um, Last year, I talked about the drawing tool that I worked for um, Spa. And we were sort of going back and forth with the animators and trying to find something that feels good. Right? I, I used this term uh, in, in the last uh, talk as well. Trying to make a drawing tool that feels good, which is really difficult, um, it turns out. Um, so when I started to work on a drawing tool for Grease Pencil 3, I sort of wanted to do it right from the beginning um, and uh, sort of learn from my mistakes from what I did at Spa and uh, make it better. One of the things that I wasn't really satisfied with is that at Spa, the drawing tool, um, the act of smoothing would smooth the whole curve while you draw when really you only need to smooth sort of this, this active window of points um, because at some point, the points are not going to change anymore. And so um, the, the algorithm that I developed for the new drawing tool, it um, does a bunch of curve fittings. So it tries to fit the points that you draw to like a Bezier curve or B-spline. And um, it does that for every new sample that you add. Um, it does a new fitting and remembers those fittings. And it then lets the points basically converge. And once they converge below a certain threshold, like let's say 0.1 of a pixel, uh, we then drop them out of this smoothing window. So then you get sort of this effect where here the dotted line is like the, the act of smoothing window, but as the points converge, they are no longer affected by the smoothing. Um, and I have a video here demonstrating this. So, um, what you're going to see is me just doing a bunch of scribbles. Um, and 
I'm going to visualize the active smoothing window using uh, vertex colors, so it's going to be in red. And um, it's very subtle, like it's, it's hard to convey this via video. Um, it's really something that you feel. But you see the, the red window there, it's sort of moving along as you draw. I hope you can see this on the video. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's not a fixed length. Uh, again, it's using the convergence of points um, as you draw. And the, the reason why you want to do this is that you want to basically minimize the amount of like jumpiness. So, so one way of doing smoothing, right, is, is you draw the whole thing and then you let go and then you smooth the whole thing. But it's sort of disturbing to the artist to see their, their curve being like <laughs> smooth afterwards. So you want to do it while drawing, but then you also want to do it in a way that it, like it doesn't feel like the, cur the, the stroke is changing too much. So this is sort of the, probably the, the right approach to this. I mean, many other uh, programs also do it this way. But yeah, this is the, the state of the drawing tool. I just wanted to uh, talk a bit about the act of smoothing there. All right. Um, no, no, yes. <laughs> Um, I have a video demo for the state of Grease Pencil 3. I tried to basically summarize some of the new things that we can do, some of the things that were already possible with Grease Pencil 4 um, in one example. Um, I, I hope I did a good job, but um, you'll, you'll see. Um, so I'm actually going to pause to make sure that this is... Yes. Okay, so people might recognize this scene. <laughs> um, and I thought it would be fun to um, put something on the blackboard uh, and, and actually animate something on it. Um, so I have my, <laughs> my sort of bouncy ball animation here. Um, one that I did. Um, it's not the best, but hey. Um, <laughs> and uh, so this is using Grease Pencil. Um, but as you can see, there's sort of this shade on top of it, which is not something that you could do. Um, and we're actually, actually going to mesh Grease Pencil using geometry nodes. But here you can see it's, it's you know, your classic animation. You have your dope sheet, you have your keyframes. You're doing your animation um, on, on this blackboard. Um, and here I'm having, I have two geometry nodes modifiers, just one to change the thickness so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. Um, and yeah, you can actually live draw with these modifiers, something that isn't really possible right now with, with other tools. Um, so it, it meshes um, the, the curves as you draw. You can see the wireframe of the mesh. And this is it uh, rendered with Eevee. Um, see, I'm just showing off uh, how, how the drawing works with um, sort of seeing the modifiers live. And this is the geometry node setup. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but um, it's, it's basically just curve to mesh, right? This is sort of the important node. Um, and I'm just capturing a bunch of attributes before and storing them after so I can use them in a shader, sort of a classic thing you do. Um, in this case, I'm building my own UVs, um, so I can use them uh, later on. I think I'm going to show the shader here in just a second as well. Um, but yeah, it's a fairly simple setup. There's a delete geometry because I'm actually using a curved circle for the profile and deleting the back faces. But again, uh, it's not really important. Um, this is the shader. I mean, it's, you know. It's just a simple chalk shader. It sort of looks like chalk, maybe. Um, and I'm just reading a bunch of attributes. So you can see the UVs, for example. It's quite nice. And then um, doing a bunch of math and using noise textures to make it look like chalk. So this is the output of the noise textures, and then just using a transparent shader and diffuse shader mixed together. Right. Um, oh, no. Ah. 
That was not what I wanted to do. Yes. And then another cool thing I'm showing here is the eraser. So the eraser changed a bit. Um, we didn't just port it. Uh, this is not something that I worked on. This is something that Amelie worked on. Um, and it's now doing uh, like a correct erasing in the sense that it's not only deleting points, but it's also creating points at, creating points at the intersection of the eraser. So this is how this look li looks like. I mean, it's also working live with the, with the modifier, of course. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's so much fun to play with. <laughs> so you can see that it, it correctly deletes the points um, and creates the intersections. And then we can also, with Grease Pencil, right, we have access to other attributes that you wouldn't, for example, have in the, in the curve tool, right? So here we can use vertex colors to change the, the shading. I don't know why I chose these bright colors because you can't really see any difference, but I think I, I end up cho choosing like a purple. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's much better. All right, this is, this is it. That was the short uh, demo video of uh, where we are at and sort of showing off what we can do right now. Um, All right, so I want to take a, a quick moment to talk about the contributors because there's not only me working on this, but also other people. And look at a few numbers. So here are the like, total commits and commits per author. Um, yeah, guess whose full-time job this is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, Amelie again, so Amelie was um, in um, Amsterdam for um, almost three months uh, working on the project. So she did all of the uh, dope sheet uh, integration. So all the animation features are basically by her as well as the eraser. Those are sort of the two big things. Um, Pratik is constantly doing fixes and reporting things and creating tasks. Uh, it's been really great having him on board as well. Uh, Casey, a contributor who um, did, for example, the uh, transform operators in edit mode and who also worked on um, the lines overlay so you can see your selected curves in, in, in the um, edit mode. Um, and so many more, like uh, Sietze, who's also here today working on stuff. Um, Antonio's been contributing. Um, yeah. Thank you to all of you. <laughs> and some other fun stuff. Um, commits per day. You can see it's going up. <laughs> Put the trend line in there. So yeah, more people are contributing um, since we now have you know a solid baseline for actually developers to get in and examples um, to pick up. Uh, you can see my holiday break uh, <laughs> and coming back from holidays. <laughs> um, and again, I mean, I'm just, I'm just bragging about like, this is my job now, so. Uh, <laughs> right. But there's a lot left to do. I mean, Grease Pencil 3 is, is not done by any means. Um, here are some examples of the things that we're missing right now. Um, so we need your help. If, uh, if you're a developer and you're interested in joining the effort, um, there's a task. You can scan the QR code or just go to the link. It has a, so a short description on how to get started and a list of tasks that you could possibly work on. So um, yeah, if you're fascinated by Grease Pencil and interested in 3D, here you go. Let's make it happen together. <laughs> <laughs>
right, so we do have time. We have like 20 minutes left. So um, if anybody has any questions about Grease Pencil 3, yes. Yeah, yeah. My question is a bit specific, but when you showed us how the process of the drawing the line works in between the spreadsheet and the offset attributes, could you explain why the offset attributes attributes couldn't be um, attributes of the second spreadsheet, the virtual spreadsheet? Yes. It's a good question. So the question was, uh, when we were talking about the drawing and how there were these two spreadsheets and this offset array, why that offset thing couldn't be like one of the columns, basically. Um, and the reason is that we need this last element because it indicates how long the last curve is, right? So if you imagine there was the four, um, zero, four, and eight, this eight basically indicates the end of the last curve. Um, so it's, it's a way of, um, instead of saying where something starts and then storing a size, we just store every start of the curve. Um, but this means that we have to have this one more element um, to make that work. So it's, it's not an, an attribute, it's its own array. Yes. Okay, so two questions. The first one, uh, I already forgot. No, it was... Um, shadows. Oh, shadows, right. So um, so there was an the idea that Grease Pencil Render Engine could also cast shadows for fills, for example. And um, now it's really easy, actually, to take geometry nodes and say, okay, I'm just going to fill this curve. Um, and then you have a mesh, and you can just render that with Eevee, and it casts shadows and has reflections and everything. So I think the way forward is not to add too many features to the Grease Pencil rendering, but utilize the engine that we already have, which is Eevee. Um, and uh, that already works really well. I had a demo for that, but didn't want to put it in uh, just yet. Um, so yeah, and then the other question was um, about layers. <clears throat> the other question was about, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, layers and um, what was the specific? Is, For example, when we erase, uh, if you erase on every layer, right. you, want to work on one layer. you only want to want, want on to work on one layer. So um, we we can have you know options like soloing a layer, uh, etc. And actually, the data structure now is is much like it's much easier to add that functionality to say, okay, I want to I, I only want to work on like. Um, you know, a soloed layer, uh, etc. So the API that um, is now in place for Grease Pencil 3 is, is much easier to um, sort of add this sort of functionality. And I think we're going to have that, yes. Yes, Howard. Um, so you mentioned one of the motivations for this was performance. I'm interested to know if you have any performance numbers already. I'm also interested to know how you're approaching using parallelization and stream instructions. Are you Right, so the question uh, was about performance. So what are the performances like now? And also, um, you know, what are the, the methods that we can utilize now, like multi-threading, um, parallelization, et cetera? Um, so I, I do have numbers. In fact, the, before we actually started implementing Grease Pencil, I uh, wrote a whole test of uh, comparing performances to make sure that we actually gain performance using this new method. Um, and yes, we did. So um, I, I had some examples where things were like two, three, five times faster. Um, I think for me, the more important thing is that we are using a lot less memory. So files that, like test files that I had, go from 300 megabytes down to like, you know, 16. So crazy numbers um, when, when you think about them. And of course, that also means that the performance is much better, right? We, when we do a copy, we copy less data, et cetera. Um, and in terms of the, the methods that we utilize, so we're basically relying on the fact that now the whole code base is shared, right? So when there's an improvement, like at the lower level for hair curves, it applies to Grease Pencil. 
right? We, we don't have separate worlds anymore. We're, we're relying on the fact that these uh, data structures are similar and we can utilize um, um, sort of the benefit of sharing code, uh, the code there. And I don't think I've, um, I've, I haven't looked at performance much yet. Um, it's not sort of the, um, the first priority to get things, uh, you know, as optimized as we can. Uh, now we're just, you know, making sure that we have feature parity with Grease Pencil 2. <laughs> um, and so there haven't been much uh, performance optimizations yet. Um, we're going to look at that. Right, so the question was, um, since the data structures are the same, you know, can you like groom Grease Pencil now with the hair curve tools? Um, and I think the answer is basically, well, you, you would use geometry nodes to convert one from the other, for example, and then you have, um, you know, curves essentially. And um, I think like, you know, sharing modes is a bit more difficult than sharing uh, the tools, but we're going in that direction with no tools. So um, I think the, the goal will be that um, some of the tools, you know, some, some grooming tools might be specialized for grooming. They might not necessarily apply, like a spheres fall off for sculpting and grease pencil is less relevant, re re relevant than uh, in grooming. Um, but you can totally imagine that those, you know, that, that code would be shared for both because indeed they do use the same structure. Um, Yeah, it's true. So the question was, um, with the new data structure, like everything is in arrays, and that seems really nice for reading. And um, but what happens when you change the data structure? Like what happens when you remove a point, etc.? And um, indeed, it means that you need to do copies. But for example, for the eraser, what we do is we essentially rebuild the whole drawing um, from scratch. Um, so you, you, like we didn't, we do need to do lots of copies, but. Um, in the end, those copies are a lot cheaper um, because the data structure is just optimized for copying, right? You, you just take a whole chunk of memory and move it from there to there. So, um, and the, the other thing that we can do is um, we, ne we can now work in parallel. If you have like a whole um, array of points, you can say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna allocate this chunk to one thread, this chunk to another thread, this chunk to another, et cetera. So we can do a whole bunch of work in parallel. And in the end, we just gain a lot of performance using that, doing that. Yes. Is it the same reason why you're copying, for example, the positions completely and not by position for every word, for example? You've shown you can uh, take time and uh, memory to be copied, for example, just the position uh, on one uh, object or the other, because there are changes. So I guess the question is, um, when I was talking about implicit sharing, I guess was the question with um, when I just need to copy the points. Um, right, so with implicit sharing, implicit sharing is really only possible when your data is in one place, right? Before, because data was spread out throughout memory, it's not possible to implicitly share that because you have multiple pointers instead of just one to one chunk of memory. So really implicit sharing only becomes possible when you have the in like, let's say the whole position is packed into one, right? Yeah. Yep. When um, you use the one circle tool, like the drawing mode, say you draw a straight line on the bouncing wall, is there any plans to have sort of this modifier do anything to improve the like shrink wrapping or increasing or decreasing the points when the lines they follow the bouncing wall? <coughs> okay, so I guess the question is about um, drawing on surfaces and, and sort of resampling to move along the surface. Yeah, um, for
for, for now in the Grease Pencil 3 tool right now, you can't draw on surfaces, so it's not implemented yet. And uh, it's going to be something that um, we're going to look at um, in the future. And yep. <laughs> so um, it's going to be implemented. We just haven't gotten to it yet. There's lots of things that we obviously want to implement. But really, the goal of Grease Pencil 3 is to build a foundation that we can actually add new features on top of. Um, that perform well and that are well integrated with the rest of Blender. A question might be more for Jack than for you, but I wonder if the implicit sharing, uh, if this is not the case from the token rights we have, that uh, so conceptually we are also able to take the token rights to make a new token. So what happened on the development side if it's done? So the question was, is the implicit share, uh, sharing code using the same code as the depth graph because the depth graph has already this concept of copy and write. Um, I guess the copy and write in the depth graph is sort of a misnomer because it wasn't really doing the same thing. Um, so the implicit sharing is, is new code by Jacques um, and it's, it's not using any of the code from the depth graph. The depth graph sort of, I guess the copy and write from the depth graph was more like the depth graph was hoping that the data structure itself would do a copy on write uh, more than it was itself implementing copy on write. Yes. Um, I have two questions, and the first one is, uh, and I don't confirm that I understand this correct, that the minimal uh, using it for a copy in the um, new grid pencil is one column of property in uh, one frame. Is that correct? And the second Okay, so the first question uh, was about what is the minimum copy we need to do per frame, I guess, yeah. sort of. Um, so, well, we just need to copy a pointer, right? It's, it's very easy to now copy, like with implicit sharing, we just, when we duplicate the object, we just essentially copy a pointer for every attribute. So I think in Grease Pencil, we have a few attributes that are built in, like the position, like the radius but you just need to copy those pointers. So it, you know, it's, it's negligible, the, the copy that you need to do there. Um, and the other question was about groups and what are the plans for groups and uh, what can we expect for them, like uh, coloring, et cetera. So the idea for groups is that you know, an animator can just have a bunch of layers grouped them together and know that, okay, these layers belong together. Um, it's not something that is gonna have like custom data, at least that's not planned. Uh, it's not something that um, you you can do much with other than um, you know organizing your layers in a better way um, in this tree-like structure, right? Because groups can contain groups. Um, there's going to be color tags. That's something that is already there in the core structure. It's not exposed to the UI yet, but yeah, you can have like color tags and color them again. So it's it's really easy to uh, see at a glance, you know, what your layer structure is. Yes, the age-old question, can we erase from fills? Um, so the plan is, of course, that we can do that in the future. It was just something that um, we, we could have done that with Grease Pencil 2. The problem is that you start to really like stretch the limits of the data structure that you have. Right Nowadays, we can represent, for example, holds in a fill much easier than we could have done before. These were sort of limitations that um, we are now with the new foundation um, basically um, allowing. Um, so erasing from fills is a project that is planned, but it's not gonna be there for Grease Pencil 3 because the project Grease Pencil 3 is, let's get to the feature set of Grease Pencil 2 and make sure that we can do all of that, but much faster and much better. And then let's look at new things like erasing from fills. Yeah, so the question was about active smoothing and how you control, can you control the amount of smoothing? 
Uh, yes, of course you can. Uh, you can turn it off. Um, there's going to be just one slider, I think, at a higher level that allows you to adjust the amount of smoothing. Um, at a more technical level, what that does is it changes the curve fitting threshold. So if, if people know about curve fitting, what that means is that it basically tries to fit the curve within like a certain boundary of uh, like, you know, you could imagine a pixel amount. So the slider would basically control how wide or uh, small that, that boundary would be and it allows you to control the, the act of smoothing very precisely. Um, and there's going to be a whole bunch of other options. I think in the current code, the um, algorithm has about uh, 25 parameters that are now hard-coded because that's how you start. Um, but you could imagine that they would be exposed and would allow you to control the drawing in many ways. Um, it might not be like necessary to expose that like in the tool setting, but you know maybe in some setting in Blender or something where you can adjust the drawing feeling basically. Okay, no more questions. So that's it. Thank you.